Hello, I'm John. I'm a psychotherapist. We ask the internet to ask us some questions, anything to do with mental or emotional health. Let's have a look at today's question. In your previous videos, you've mentioned sleep. Please, can you give me some top tips for good sleep? I can. Um, there's a number of different elements to this sleep thing. It's really important. As, as you may have seen in a previous video, there's two types of sleep that we're interested in. Slow wave sleep, in which you rest where you should be for very roughly 80% of your night. And, and REM sleep, which is where you do most of your dreaming, where you should be for about 20% of your night. Your dreams are there to get rid of your undischarged emotional arousal from the previous day. Simple as that. Your, your slow wave sleep, your deep sleep, your light sleep, your rest sleep is all there in order to look after the hardware, to look after the body, your immune system, your, your cell structure, repairing and restoring yourself. It's perfect rest. So we need to get good sleep, but we need to get good quality sleep. So it's not just the amount, it's the quality of that sleep that's important. So, so let's just look at some things that we can do. There's, there's, I guess there's three elements to this, isn't there? There's what you do in order to go to sleep. There's staying asleep and what happens in the middle of the night. And there's how you feel, it's how you feel when you wake up in the morning. So first, top tip for good sleep. Number one, if you have got really significant emotional things that have upset you during the day and you haven't been able to do anything about it, we need to try to get rid of it before you go to sleep. And there's a number of different ways of doing that. Let me tell you what works for me. I do this before I go to sleep, not just before I go to sleep. I do it earlier in the evening. I take out a little notebook and I write down the things that have really hacked me off that I haven't been able to do anything about. And I write down the things that I'm worried about in the future. So I, I just on the left hand page, I write down a simple, maybe two, three sentence paragraph. I am worried that. And then on the opposite page, I write down a good outcome. I really let my imagination get absorbed into this idea of a good outcome. I'm not trying to change the, the future through the, the power of positive thinking. What I'm trying to do is engage my imagination in just expecting a good outcome. Remember those words, expect a good outcome. In writing down all the things that I'm worried about, that has a, that the, the act of of changing all those chaotic thoughts into coherent sentences has a tendency to diffuse them. You are reasoning with yourself as you do that. And I might take my two or three big worries of the future, and it's a very quick exercise. You just write them down, you write down a good outcome, you become absorbed as, 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 as much as you can in expecting that good outcome. Now you have less mulch to deal with um, in your sleep. The next thing, before you climb into bed, make absolutely sure that you have at least an hour, yes, an hour away from any screens at all. Now, I know this is going to be a challenge for a huge number of you out there, but please give it a try. Get rid of the phone, the television, the computer, anything, any kind of screen that is emitting light. And there's an important reason for this. In order to go to sleep, you need to release melatonin. Your brain naturally um, releases this melatonin and it's the melatonin that if you like puts you into standby mode you're still you're still alive but just there's a little red light on you're not there in full high definition 4k so stay away from screens have a read an old-fashioned book you remember those things made out of out of bits of paper anything that's not going to get you hugely emotionally aroused I promise you after two or three or four nights of staying away from screens in that time before bed, um, you will benefit enormously and it will be much easier for your body to produce the natural chemicals that you need in order to go to sleep. Number three, please ensure that your room is cool enough for you to be able to sleep. And you, you don't need to get cold in order to go to sleep, but it is useful to experience a temperature drop. It doesn't matter if it's from there to there or from there to there. What perhaps you need to try is to trick your own system into getting to sleep. Go and have a hot bath or a hot shower and then just end with some cold water. Um, just that, that dropping 
of your temperature will allow the melatonin to be released. Next tip for good sleep is about what you consume during the day. Firstly, stay away from caffeine. You have no requirement whatsoever for caffeine in your life. I had a client come to me recently and he was struggling to get to sleep, um, really battled and we went through all sorts of things and uh, perhaps I, he missed this bit out or I missed this bit out, but I, uh, towards the end of the session, I just asked him, do you consume much caffeine? And he said he had about 10 double espressos every day. I got him to cut those out of his life and I promise you he slept really, really well after that. So get rid of caffeine, get rid of the sugary drinks and have a think about what you're eating in, in that sort of second half of the day. If you're having a lot of processed carbohydrates, the chances are that there's bits of your digestive system that are working much too hard in the night when they don't need to. And that will affect the quality of your sleep. Get some sunshine during the day. In the middle of the afternoon, two, three o'clock, something like that, go out for 20 minutes or so and just expose yourself to the sunlight that's out there. Even on a cloudy day, you will get enough sunlight to help establish yourself into the correct circadian rhythm and you will start getting the signals that it's time to go to sleep at the right time. Last thing, in order to get you off to sleep, you can go and download an app called Better App. There's all sorts of stuff in there that will help you, but one of them, there's lots and lots of sleep audios, bedtime stories, things to talk you off to sleep, um, just audio recordings which will help you become absorbed um, and, and just drift off into a lovely, easy, nice, gentle, relaxed sleep. Next thing, as far as staying asleep is concerned, the trap so many of us fall into is you wake up in the middle of the night and you think, I'm awake. And you open your eyes to look at the clock. What you've just done when you've done that is switched on the visual cortex. You have taken yourself out of standby mode and there you are in full high definition again. And you, as I say, that switching on of the visual cortex, you cannot be asleep if your eyes are open. So it's easy, become fed up and irritated just for a moment but keep your eyes closed. If you keep your eyes closed and just say, okay, I'm gonna go back to sleep now. My eyes are actually stuck shut. And you just start doing that easy breathing thing, you know, nice gentle breath in, bring all your focus back to your breathing and just a much slower, easy breath out. There's another video on this channel somewhere that talks about 7-Eleven breathing. And that's all you need to do is just bring your, your focus back to your breath all the time. And in no time, it's easy for you to just drift off to sleep. Most of us wake up about four or five times every night without realizing it. And what's happened, it's, a, it's an ancient bit of our brain, just checking the stone is still across the entrance to our cave and there's no saber toothed tigers in there with us. And, and, and so all we're doing is subconsciously checking our environment that we're safe. Um, but, but most of us are not aware of it. It's the same phenomenon that you wake up in the morning and you don't really remember your dreams, although you might be aware that you had a dream. So it's fine to wake up. It's an expected part of a good night's sleep that you wake up a number of times. Keep your eyes closed and give yourself the best fighting chance of going back to sleep. Next top tip, please resist the temptation to self-medicate with alcohol, weed, anything else like that. Uh, all these artificial things to send you off to sleep are not in the least bit helpful. Both alcohol and weed have a tendency to suppress your REM sleep, which is an important part of your, your sleep in de-arousing you, as I said. Last thing, please go to bed in sufficient time to have about eight hours sleep. Give yourself the best fighting chance of doing that. When it's time to go to sleep and you've settled down easily and gently, just bring your focus to your body and just do a quick body scan. Allow yourself to focus on each muscle group, if you like, and imagine it becoming really loose and limp and relaxed. Imagine it being so relaxed that it just doesn't work anymore. You can't move. And then allow yourself to just drift off easily and naturally. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share. Tell all your friends about it and comment. One last thing. Please take excellent care of each other. And please take very good care of yourself. Sleep well.